least six people have been killed. And, and obviously people are enraged by the death in custody of this young woman, Massa Amini. Uh, she was picked up by the morality police. Two days later, after several hours in coma, she died. And the pictures of her on, on a hospital bed bleeding from an ear enraged people in a big way against the authorities and particularly against the morality police. Mm. Kazra Naji, thank you so much. Thank you. Hurricane Fiona, which has been battering islands in the Caribbean, has been upgraded to a major Category 4 storm as it approaches Bermuda. The U.S. National Hurricane Center reported sustained wind speeds of more than 130 miles an hour. Fiona has already caused devastation on Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic and the Turks and Caicos Islands. The BBC has learnt that the pilot of the plane, which crashed in the English Channel three years ago, killing the footballer Emiliano Sala, was concerned about the state of the aircraft. In a conversation with a friend shortly before the flight, David Ibbotson talked about several faults and described the plane as dodgy. Kaylee Thomas reports. This is the last time Emiliano Sala and David Ibbotson were seen alive. For the first time, we can show you CCTV footage from January the 21st, 2019, as the footballer and pilot go through airport security. These were final checks before the striker flew from Nantes to Wales to become a Premier League player at Cardiff City. Earlier, David Ibbotson is seen on the runway, preparing the plane ahead of the flight. Everything was going to plan, and he sent this video to a pilot friend. But in a phone call to the same friend, the recording of which has been obtained by the BBC, David Ibbotson raised concerns about the plane. I picked a football up from uh, Cardiff. Uh, it should have been brought from Nantes. I think it's about £20 million pounds worth of something. They entrusted me to uh, pick him up in a dodgy garage. Normally I have a life jacket sitting between my seats, but tomorrow we're wearing the life jacket, that's for sure. This aircraft, I think it's got to go back in the hangar. Might be your last chance to have a good old chat with me in a good old boat tomorrow. <laughs> Normally I have a life jacket sitting. That's quite a bombshell of a take to actually hear it in David Ibbotson's own words and to hear that he was concerned about the flight 24 hours earlier. Uh, I, I'd consider that absolutely explosive, frankly. David Ibbotson should never have taken the job to fly Emiliano Sala, as he wasn't a commercial pilot and couldn't legally fly at night. His concerns about the plane were echoed by his passenger. Emiliano sent this last voice message to his friends from inside the plane. Estoy acá arriba del avión que parece que se está poca de a pedazo y me estoy yendo para Cardiff, loco que no sé si van a mandar a alguien a buscarme porque no me van a encontrar, pero Instagram. In the last six months of her life, she had 15,000 engagements on Pinterest and on Instagram. She had an average of 130 engagements a day 
during that time frame, the last six months of her life. Now, during this inquest, we will hear from those social media giants, senior employees at Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, and Pinterest are due to give evidence. Uh, thousands of pages of Molly's internet history have also been submitted as evidence as this inquest uh, examines whether or not social media algorithms to keep users hooked played a part in her death. Her family have waited long, five long years to reach this point. They hope now they will finally get to some answers as to what may have contributed to their daughter's death. Hi there, thanks so much. Such a desperately sad story, isn't it? Thank you. Well, let's take a look now at some of the stories grabbing your interest on our website and on the Sky News app. Uh, and this story has really generated an awful lot of interest. This is uh, the protests in Iran after the death of a woman detained by the morality police. A police assistant has died and four officers have been injured uh, in that violence there. Uh, and just below it, this story, King Charles is planning a less expensive coronation, apparently slimming down uh, the monarchy after his mother's death. We know that he has gone up to Scotland now uh, for a, a few days while the royal family continues its private mourning away from the national mourning. Uh, and a lot of you also clicking on this story. What nuclear weapons does Russia have? Uh, it's worth looking at because it also looks at the capability of those weapons. A lot of you are quite interested in the nuts and bolts uh, of what Putin has talked about. Uh, another explainer as well about what Putin's mobilisation uh, means. Well, you can get all the latest on the Sky News app by scanning to the QR code, which is on your screen right now, and that will take you to the home page all of the top stories, as well as the most popular ones that we've just been talking about. Well, in the meantime, let's take you to the weather. The aircraft starts taxiing towards runway three. It's scheduled to land in Cardiff just two hours later. It never arrived. The depths of the English Channel, the plane's final resting place. As investigations and court proceedings continue, and as two families mourn the loss of loved ones, we now have more insight into what happened in the hours before that fateful flight. Kayleigh Thomas, BBC News, in Cardiff. Uh, well, three quarters of a metre of rain or more on Puerto Rico, bringing significant flooding and widespread damage to the electricity networks there. Fiona, with gusts of 160 miles an hour, is heading northwards and will impact across parts of Nova Scotia over the coming days. So we will he hear more about this storm system. For us, well, we've got some cloud thickening across the northwest of the UK with an approaching weather front here, moving into Scotland, threatening our breaks of rain. But away from the northwest of the UK, actually, for most of you, it's a fine afternoon with variable cloud and some sunny spells. I think the best of the sunshine today, southern England, southern Wales, parts of eastern Scotland. But where we see the cloud just building up for a time in the early afternoon, it will tend to melt away a little bit as we head into the evening time. So we'll see a bit more sunshine to end the day for many. Temperatures high teens to low 20s. So in the sunshine, it is going to feel pleasantly warm with light winds. Now, overnight tonight, our band of rain, which is a particularly slow moving weather front. It's going to take two days to cross the UK. Well, here it comes into Scotland and Northern Ireland, bringing some heavier pulses of rain overnight. And eventually that band of rain starts to edge its way into Cumbria. Now, with the cloud and rain across the northwest, pretty mild, 14, 15 degrees. England and Wales, 10 to 12 with some clear spells. Now heading into Thursday, our weather front continues its journey into England and Wales. The rain quite heavy for a time, but as it pushes eastwards through the day, it'll probably start to get a little bit weaker. Sunshine returns to Scotland and Northern Ireland, just a few showers into the northwest, but a cooler feel to the weather and a fresher feel as well. 16 degrees here, bright, still and warm across East Anglia in the southeast with highs of 20. Thursday night, that's when the weather front crosses the Midlands and starts to bring the rain into parts of East Anglia and Southeast England. And although the rain will initially come in quite lightly, I think through the day it'll probably turn a bit heavier and the front actually drags it, its heels a bit across parts of East Anglia in the southeast. So it could be quite a wet day here on Friday. The rest of you, it's dry with some sunny spells, a few showers in the northwest though, and those temperatures just easing down, 17 or 18 degrees with a fresher feel to the weather. Now the weekend's not looking bad for the most part with some sunshine. However, into next week, we've got some blues coming down from the northwest. So northwesterly winds strengthen, 
fresher and cooler those temperatures will be dropping so in edinburgh 12 degrees as we head into monday reasonably mild for england and wales through the weekend but again a fresher feel to the weather as we head into next week that's how things are looking jane all right chris thank you very much thank you and just a reminder of our top story this lunchtime energy bills for businesses are to be cut by about half their predicted level in a package of measures to try to help with soaring bills that is it from the BBC News at one. So goodbye from the team here for today on BBC One. We'll join our newsrooms wherever you are. Have a good afternoon. Bye bye. Good afternoon. It's 1.33. This is the BBC News Channel. I'm Laura McGee and here's your latest sports news. The former world number one Roger Federer says his decision to retire came after he stopped believing he could continue playing because of persistent injuries. The 20-time Grand Slam champion will play in one last match at the Labour Cup later this week before officially hanging his racket up for the final time. The Swiss revealed in an interview with the BBC that he feels he overachieved during his incredible career and admits the decision to step away has been emotional. Federer, who also spent a record 237 weeks as world number one, is hoping to team up with Rafael Nadal in the doubles on Friday in his last professional match. I cried enough in the past, uh, writing the letter, going through the emotions, and especially in letting my closest friend. Next month, and today is a classic celebrating 40 years since the release of New Gold Dream. 40 years. Can you actually believe that? I cannot. Simple Minds here on BBC Radio Scotland. Thank you for joining me on the afternoon show. I am Nicola Meehan. And coming up between now and four, we are heading to Dundee. We're going to be hearing all about a new opera festival. Anna Volander's chatting to Dr Turned Author Adam Kay. And Paul English is getting to know writer Jenny Colgan. And the brilliant Orhan Pamuk, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, discusses his new book, Nights of Plague. We've also got music from Grace Jones, The Cure, Jerry Rafferty and ABBA. And I'm chatting to Hamza Yassin, the well dyed photographer and presenter who is about to take to the dance floor in Strictly. And that has inspired today's topical tune. I want to know your favourite songs to dance to, any era, any genre, basically any song you like. What would you like to hear? 80295 on the text. You are working as a waitress in
Cat, what would you like to do now? I'm going to stick with the orange case for now. I might change, but I'll well, stick. Well, you have one challenge yeah. remaining. Here's the next quick-fire question. The Falcons are a Premiership Rugby Union team from which... Yeah. Castle. Which city? Josh, Newcastle is the right answer. Come and join Cat on the penultimate row of the red steel zone. What would you like to do now? I think I'll stick. You're yeah. going to stick with the green case? Here's the next question. Susanna, Judith and Hamnet were the children of which 16th and 17th century playwright? Josh. William Shakespeare. Is that a guess, Josh? Yeah. It's the perfect guess at the perfect time, Josh. Take a step forward. Josh, this is your final opportunity to challenge someone else for a case. Would you like to do that, or are you happy with what you currently hold? I think I'm just going to stick with this again. OK, if you do win Chase the Case today, you'll be taking home the contents of that green case. Kat is still in a great position. Val is only two correct answers away from stealing herself if she wants to do that. Josh, you get this right, and you're today's winner. Mount Olympus is the highest peak... Cat! Greece. Mount Olympus is the highest peak, Cat, in which country? Greece is the right answer. Would you like to join Josh on the final line of the red zone? Cat, would you like to challenge, or are you happy with what you currently own? Um, I'm not too sure what's in this case, but I'm just going to trust my instincts and not challenge and... Going to Thanks stick to with the orange case. Going to stick with the orange case. It comes down to this, then. Whoever gets this right, if it's one of you two, you'll be declared the winner of today's programme. Here it is. Which 1967 war film focuses on the exploits of 12 convicts? Cat. The Dirty Dozen. Cat. I can tell you that Dirty Dozen is the right answer. You've won, Chase, the case. Come to the vault for the final time. What a game. What, <laughs> what a finish. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. He did really well get over the line there. But I can tell you mm. the two values that have gone from the game already, the two cases eliminated, mm. were the zero and the £1,000. Right. So you've either got 500, mm -hmm. 100, mm -hmm. or 5,000 in here. I'd be happy with any of those. <laughs> Kat, you've won Chase the Case. And today, you are going home with... <laughs> £500. That's absolutely fine. Happy with that? Yep. Would you like to see inside Val or Josh's case first? Uh, I think I'd like to see inside Josh's. OK. Yeah. Josh was pretty adamant that he had a good case he there. Was. He didn't want to let go of it. Mm -hmm. Josh, were you right, even though you couldn't get it over the line? Let's have a look. There it is. Yeah. Let's confirm, then, what the value of Val's case is as well. There's the £100. So yep. those are the five values. And you've won Chase the Case today. You'll be going home with £500. Congratulations, Kat. Thank you to the rest of you as well. You've been great contestants. But our winner today is Kat. Well done. Thank you, Dan. Polar bears, tigers, seals, climate change impacting wildlife. Frozen Planet 2 on iPlayer, press red now. Love, drugs, politics, our friends in the north, part of the BFI centenary bundle, BBC4 at 10. This is a reminder, Katie, it's time for you to get Ralph a beer. Different. What is being married? I know you're doing it right. There's no room, book is there? One day at a time. Brand new Ralph and Katie coming soon to BBC One and iPlayer. Radio Two, just like one of the family. Listen now on BBC Sounds. Perfect prizes in House of Games, confident contestants in Unbeatable tonight from six on BBC Two. Now it's those incredible eggheads.
These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. Now, taking on the might of the Eggheads today are the big, fat, stupid quizzers from Manchester. Team Captain Giles hosts a weekly quiz at the Lasso Gowrie pub, which the rest of the team attend, called the Big Fat Stupid Quiz. So, let's meet them. Hi, my name's Giles. I'm the producer of a small media production company. Hello, my name's Louise and I'm a research fellow. Hi, I'm Lou and I'm a deputy stage manager. Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm a head of service. Hello, I'm Harold and I'm a housing administrator. Giles and team, hello. 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 Welcome to you. Giles, tell us about the quiz. Well, it's a weekly quiz at the Lassagari. Uh, it's called Big Fat Stupid Quiz because essentially it requires no general knowledge, just the ability to uh, humiliate yourself. <laughs> so, I see. So it's... How can you do it without any general knowledge? Uh, well, I mean, obviously there is an element of you general knowledge. You need to knowledge, have some answers. But I tend to concentrate on the more sillier side of uh, quizzing, really. And uh, it's gone on for a while, this quiz? Uh, 18 years this year. Really? 18 years? Yeah. Have you all quizzed at the pub? Yes. 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 You yeah. have? All right. Well, that's great. That could come in handy against this lot over here. <laughs> Good luck, challengers. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs, but if the challengers fail to defeat the eggheads, as you know, the prize money rolls over. So, big fat stupid quizzes. I hate saying that to you, by the way. <laughs> the eggheads feel bad about it. The eggheads have won just the last game, which means two thousand pounds says you can't beat them to date. The first head to head battle is on sport. So, oh. one of you against either <laughs> Lisa, Steve, Barry, Kevin, or Chris. I think Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. And who are we gonna? Yeah. Is it Ruth? Yeah. All right, Ruth. Ruth. Okay. Against yeah. which egghead? Any one of the five. Oh. You want whoever's Lisa? best. You want, you want whoever's oh. best who can't, who therefore wouldn't be able to do one of the other heads. Ah. Uh, okay. That's true. That's true. You're just trying to make me go up against Kevin, nice aren't strategy. you? strategy. Yes. That's what it is. <laughs> Maybe we should do. It's that. Just trying to get rid yeah. of Kevin for the rest of the yes. year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what we're doing? Okay. That's, I think that's, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Yeah. Okay. Kevin it is. OK, so Ruth from Big Fat Stupid Quizzes takes on Kevin. This has not been a bad tactic before, has there? People well, some, hurling themselves Sometimes it pays off, yeah. Because <laughs> he's, he's not expecting this, so you never know. Catch Please now go to the legendary Eggheads question room. So, Ruth, you've been volunteered for sport here. Yes, yes. Is it your thing? No. <laughs> so, was there, is there a lack of sport on? Maybe one of these will help. Whoa, I see you've added to your collection. Yep. Uh, on the team? Yes, I think generally, yeah. Oh, well, that's a shame that's come up then. <laughs> well, good luck. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, first, please. Here we go. Lucky crane. Oh, nice. Lucky German pig. Aww. Oh, my Japanese waving cat. Ooh. That one's super lucky. Cool. My dollar horse from Sweden. I put all my good luck charms together so that my weekend visit will go just right. Smart thinking. They're picking you up on Friday, right? Yep. And I see you've got your lucky penny spot ready to go. Yeah, it's the last... Guardiola became the manager of which Premier League football team in 2016? Is it Manchester City, Liverpool or Chelsea? Well, this might be the only sports question I get right. It's Manchester City. It is Manchester City. Well done. So you got a bit of football. What I need? Find a penny, pick it up. And all, all day, day long, long you'll, you'll have, have good, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go finish the video. Let's do it. Sam? Oh. 
Uh, just Manchester. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> of course, that's where you live, yeah. yeah. All right, Kevin. The silver... Done. Yes. He had a very long career. Woo! Kevin, you can take the round with this. Of which British boxer did Muhammad Ali reportedly comment, he hit me so hard, my ancestors in Africa felt it? Joe Bugner, Henry Cooper or John Conti? Well, it's not, not, not John Conti, but um, I think he did fight both of the others. The one who famously knocked him down was Henry Cooper, so I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... It, it could be Bugner, but I'm going to have to stick with Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper's the right answer, so three out of three. Sorry, Ruth. <laughs> and I know it's not your subject, but you did well there anyway. Beaten by our egghead, Kevin will be in the final. Ruth has been knocked out. Come back to us, please, and we'll play round two. So, as it stands, big, fat, stupid quizzes have lost a brain from the final round. The eggheads have not lost any so far. The next subject for you is arts and books. Ooh. So, Giles and team, who wants this? I think we know. Well, we had you well, down for books. I think we discussed this on the train, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We had a little chat about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, Lou. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, have, a I'll yeah. have a go. Who would we choose? OK, Lou against, obviously, anyone but Kevin. I might try Steve. 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 I think it's really I think we'll go with Harold. I think yeah. we'll be right there. OK. Think... record, Ross is aiming to raise awareness of fragile marine ecosystems and support their preservation. Jake Zuckerman, BBC Look North. Deaths caused by alcohol hit a new high during the first nine months of 2020, the biggest toll recorded since 2001. For many alcoholics, withdrawal can be extremely challenging. Jill Dummigan has been given rare access to the NHS's biggest inpatient detox unit in Manchester. If you feeling pain, let me know. Yeah. One of the first treatments patients are often given here is a high vitamin intravenous infusion. We usually give it to patients that are undergoing detoxification because a lot of the times they could be malnourished um, because of poor appetite, poor eating habits, they could have lost weight. So this helps replenish the lost vitamins. Alcohol depresses brain activity. To compensate, it overproduces a substance to stimulate activity called glutamate. If alcohol is suddenly removed, that chemical imbalance can be potentially life-threatening. People don't think because it's not a banned substance 
that it should be relatively safer, but actually the withdrawals from alcohol can be catastrophically dangerous. So you can get really serious conditions like alcohol withdrawal seizures. To prevent that, for the first few days, patients are given medication to calm the brain, but it can still be a tough process. The first three days were a bit, a bit horrible, really. I, I, I couldn't sleep. Um, I was... I don't know why you're hiding I really want to get naughty